Teams of scientists around the world are racing to develop a vaccine to end the COVID-19 pandemic. Hundreds of volunteers are set to trial a new vaccine against coronavirus. In the global race for a coronavirus vaccine, Russia said today it's already won. But the challenge of finding a vaccine is only the first step to inoculating everyone in the world. Whichever country or company pioneers a vaccine will be in a powerful position. But there will be huge ethical questions about how it's deployed fairly. You submitted your questions to Slavea Chankova, our healthcare correspondent, and Callum Williams, our senior economics writer. Here are their answers. Will there ever be a silver bullet vaccine? The short answer is we don't know. There are several vaccines in late stage clinical trials, but we don't yet know which of those will work in different populations. Some of them may work better in elderly people. Uh, some of them may be better at preventing the disease versus preventing people from infecting others. So it remains to be seen what kind of vaccine we will have. And there is a chance that we may not have one as well. So vaccines that are at this stage of clinical trials usually have a chance of success uh, at about 80%. So that's very high. However, some of the vaccines are using novel technologies, meaning that the risk could be higher. How long would it take for the whole world to be vaccinated? It will probably take a couple of years at least, uh, even if we have a successful vaccine available as soon as this year. And that's because manufacturing capacity around the world is limited. Some experts believe that in the first year, um, or through the end of 2021, we may have just about 2 billion doses of a COVID-19 vaccine. That's nowhere near enough to cover the entire world. And of course, it might be the case that some people require more than one dose, right, in order to become uh, immune. So it might be that two billion can only cover, you know, a billion people or perhaps even fewer. Who benefits financially from the vaccine? The short answer is that everybody benefits from uh, the introduction of a successful vaccine. Um, it's You can measure this a number of different ways, but... Uh, at the moment, the global economy is losing in the region of 200 to 250 billion dollars a week from the uh, from the economic effects of the pandemic. And so that means that even having a vaccine, even a single day uh, ahead of where you could expect it to be, is actually a really, really good news. And it has benefits in the billions of dollars. I think it's fair to say that there will be some countries and some people uh, that benefit financially much more than others. Some of the pharmaceutical companies that have the vaccines in late stage trials have already said that they will uh, sell them at cost, so uh, on a non-profit basis, at least for the first year. But this pandemic has been so expensive for the world that you can see um, how, how a vaccine can be a very, very precious commodity. That's true. I mean, I guess I would add to that. If it was going to uh, incentivize people to develop the vaccine faster or distribute it faster, I would see no reason why the person or the team or the company that manages to do that really well, in my view, they should also be millionaires or billionaires because they, you know, they should be allowed to make a, a huge profit from this because um, they would have done something that's so, so socially useful that uh, if it makes a difference, they, they, they deserve to have that money. How much will each vaccine cost? Uh, the short answer is is nobody really knows for sure. Um, that's because a lot of the deals involving the vaccine companies and governments haven't been disclosed, either the amount that's been paid or um, the amount of doses that the companies have bought. Um, I, I've seen estimates ranging from a few dollars per vaccine shot to a few tens of dollars per vaccine shot. There is some uncertainty about the production costs as well, because some of the, these vaccines are very new. They've never been made before. So nobody knows uh, exactly what the costs of manufacturing will be. I, I expect it's the case that in most countries, people receiving the vaccines won't have to pay anything for the vaccines. They'll be given out for free. I mean, that may not be the case in all countries, but I presume that would be the case in most countries. I mean, I think there's a case, an economic case at least, to be made for... Um, if people are, are not taking up the vaccine for whatever reason, to actually pay people to to take the vaccine rather than to get them to pay. Because 
um, the benefits of people taking the vaccine are so big that it's it, it could in theory be worth governments actually paying people to, to, uh, to take it. What percentage of Americans do you estimate will choose not to get vaccinated? And how much of an issue will this be? It's difficult to predict how many people will choose not to get vaccinated. We've seen in this pandemic that there is a lot of misinformation floating around and that may impact the uptake of an eventual vaccine. So it is indeed a real danger. We know that uh, for herd immunity with um, this coronavirus, we need something like 70% of people to be vaccinated or um, at least the people who are most vulnerable to the disease if they get infected. Uh, but that's certainly a concern that people, not just in America, but in many other countries, uh, may just refuse to be vaccinated. Um, and there are some concerns because vaccine development right now is going uh, at such high speed that uh, some people might think that, you know, developers are cutting corners and the vaccine may be less safe or something like that. So that's definitely um, a, a, a problem that, that may come up. I, I agree that you can't predict uh, how many people t will be sure to take it. But I mean, the, su the survey evidence that we have is actually not that encouraging. If you look at, say, YouGov and so on have, have polled people in different countries on whether they would take a COVID vaccine. And America comes out quite near the bottom with only about sort of 50 percent of people saying that they would definitely take a vaccine, which uh, is far, far from where you would need to be if you wanted to be a herd immunity. In an ideal world, how should a vaccine be optimally distributed? In an ideal world, the very first doses of the vaccine should go to healthcare workers and social care workers. They're most at risk of contracting the disease. We already know that uh, from the first phase of the pandemic. The next batch of vaccines should go to the people who are most vulnerable of dying if they become infected. We already know that the elderly people and those with certain chronic conditions are particularly vulnerable. And then um, everybody else should come after that. Will new versions of the vaccine be required periodically? Nobody knows. Um, this is a virus that nobody knew about uh, six or seven months ago. So it remains to be seen whether it will turn out uh, to be something similar to the flu, where the virus changes, so a new vaccine uh, has to be used um, every year, slightly tweaked in some form, or the same vaccine can be uh, reused uh, if it turns out that it only provides uh, immunity of a limited duration. Will developing countries receive equal access to the vaccine, or will they be left behind? Well, they'll be left behind, for sure. Um, but I don't think there's any doubt about that, unfortunately. At the moment, at least, the coverage for, uh, for the poorest countries of the world is, is, is extremely poor. It also depends on where the manufacturing facilities for the vaccines are based. And we've seen in past pandemics, for example, in the swine flu pandemic in 2009, that rich countries um, hoarded supplies of the vaccines and developing countries did not get any of them uh, pretty much until the pandemic was over. So if manufacturing facilities are based uh, in one country, that does not uh, want to export the vaccine before it covers its entire population, and it happens to be a particularly big country, then chances are that everybody else in the world has to wait in line, particularly developing countries. Should richer countries pay for vaccines in the developing world? Yes, rich countries should pay for vaccines in the developing world, um, particularly for those countries which are you know, especially poor and, and find it especially difficult to pay for enough doses for their citizens. I think um, rich countries can also help in a more indirect way, though, um, and that is by putting a lot of money towards uh, increasing the global supply of vaccines. Uh, clearly, there are limits on, on, on what can be produced in a year, but the way, that, um, the way I see it is that we need to be going at this as, as fast as possible. If you were to be able to do that, then you would have more of a chance of basically giving the world um, a sufficient supply of vaccine or even an oversupply of vaccine, which would be no bad thing. There is already a global mechanism called Gavi, the Global Alliance for Vaccines, uh, which funds vaccines for poor countries for the standard childhood vaccinations. And the idea is that with this pandemic, um, the same vehicle can be used for rich countries to finance uh, 
the vaccine for the poor world. How should we respond to crises like this one in the future? Well, the good news is that the world is, al is already quite prepared. We, we saw this uh, in the current pandemic, uh, where vaccine, manufacture, vaccine development uh, research started as soon as the genetic code of the virus was published back in January. We are probably going to have a vaccine um, as soon as the end of this year, uh, ready to go. What, what more can be done in the future? It's difficult to predict. Um, there are all sorts of viruses, um, flu viruses, um, maybe another coronavirus that may come about. So setting up some sort of vaccine manufacturing capacity in advance that's ready to go uh, for, for such a vaccine for the world could be something that countries uh, should think about for the next one. Here at The Economist, we are working hard to keep you informed on how the COVID-19 pandemic is unfolding. If you'd like to read our coverage of the pandemic, click on the link opposite. Thank you for watching.